Welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. I'm Augustino Zoya, the host of the Homeschool Podcast. And uh, I'm here with my co-host, Kevin Lyons. Yo! And our guest today is Lee Syatt. Hello! A.K.A. the Flying Jew. Caca, caca. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do new things. Is that a crow? Uh, no, I feel like it was a kosher bird. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, sidekick. Um, good to have you back, buddy. Lee, I think that you've officially beaten darren carter's record as the most <laughs> oh snap. we've had a guest Take on. That, Dar- you know what they have the, the fighter on the kid belt that theo wins i need the homeschool belt why why did he get a belt i don't even i don't know favorite I don't, I don't follow is that what it is i think so okay that's cool so i, I need we'll get can I have the kayak <laughs> uh, yeah the fan favorite kayak yeah. all right perfect i don't know if i got a belt that'll fit you bro I get. You, you can make a double belt. You can make no, no, no. You'll you'll have to rock it over your shoulder like a cool WWE wrestler. Okay. <laughs> Andre the Giant had a belt. I can have a belt. That's a good point. That's mm-hmm. an excellent point. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna have some fun, you guys. I got a couple of things I want to talk about with Lee. And uh, it's good to have you back on, buddy. But first, this episode is brought to you by Masterclass. Masterclass. You guys, you need to be on this shit because you can take a class on just about anything, especially in the performing arts, which is where you want to be, okay? If you're any type of performing artist and you want to brush up on your skills or take an acting class, I highly recommend Masterclass because, uh, well, number one, one of the hardest things about taking a comedy class is finding the time and uh, finding the money. And with Masterclass, you can take a class on your own schedule in your house, you know, when you're ready to do it before work, after work, uh, you know, in between classes, whatever the fuck, you know. During work. Yeah, exactly. You got, uh, you, you know, you got kids. You know, after you put them to bed, you can go, you know, do a, do a couple of sessions yeah, at your own pace. You can do, like, a couple of classes in one night, knock them out, you know, whatever you want to do. And also, they're working with your budget. Um, <clears throat> it is n- normally $90 per class, but click the link in the description and sign up. You can sign up for the entire year for for 180 okay and you have access for the whole year to the website to take multiple classes so you don't have to pay per class anymore you can do the acting the comedy the writing uh you can mix it all up and you have access for the whole year so you can take your time and um they've also got cooking classes on there you know poker classes poker that's right uh music uh how to play the guitar i mean uh, uh, fucking poetry script writing acting i said that but uh, anyway it's all on there guys just uh don't take my word for it check it out for yourself click the link in the description and sign up today also this episode is brought to you by the delorean motor company watches you guys the holidays are just around the corner have you guys started your holiday shopping yet uh no i fucking have you know that <laughs> you know that I actually every year i tell myself that i'm gonna start like really early to start holiday shopping like little by little getting things you know if i see something that's good for something i'm just gonna buy it and just keep it you know i started already this is like the first year i actually started is that doing what it. you spent two hundred dollars on at a meme of music unfortunately <laughs> no that was all for me i was gonna say he bought himself all of his presents like, I, I got dropped, myself like 10 things already i dropped 200 at amoeba the other day and no christmas presents but anyway you guys the holidays are right around the corner can you believe that um or if it's not a holiday gift it's just a if it's just a badass watch if you're a person that likes watches i i got a few friends they collect watches i i have like a bunch too i like uh, i don't know what it is i like i like having a watch i like wearing a watch when you go out in public and i think there's some, it says something about you that you're fucking on time okay that's what it fucking says no i just it just says something about you i think that you should dress to impress when you go to an interview when you go to a meeting when i'm on stage i i always have a watch on and uh, I just like the look of it. I think it makes you look more professional. And uh, I also like to keep track of my time while I'm on stage and not look at my phone and be unprofessional. So, uh, and, and yeah. for like the last year, I haven't worn any of my watches except for my DeLorean Motor Company watch because uh, it's probably the most valuable one that I have, um, mostly because it just kind of means something to me because I really. I, I love the DeLorean brand. I love that they make watches and I get to rock one. I can't afford one of their cars. So I get to fucking rock the watch. Anyway, you guys, click the link in the description and get 15% off your very own DeLorean Motor Company watch, courtesy of the Homeschool Podcast. How about that? All right, you guys, we're going to have some fun. Like I said, Lee Sayat is here. Kevin Lyons is here. And I'm Augustino Zoida. This is Homeschool Podcast. Please take your seats. School is now in session. Homeschool Podcast. What I do with my water? The homeschool podcast. Why? Because he was homeschooled. I don't want to talk. <laughs> that. 
Okay. I don't want to do that at all. Thanks, Lee. I get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, and welcome back to Homeschool Podcast. Um, what the fuck's going on, Lee? I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you're here too. It's been a, it's been a lot of a lot of comedy for me. How about you? Okay, so since the last time you were here, which wasn't that long ago, by the way. No, it feels like just yesterday. It was like maybe last month you were on the show? I think it was a couple months. Maybe it was. Um, and then, um, so since that time, is a lot of comedy? Yeah, yeah, I've been, been really lucky. So I think I think probably the last time we were talking about me going to Skankfest in June. Oh, yeah, yes, that's Yes, you right, just got yeah. back from, from New York. Okay, yeah, so that was a few months ago. Um, and you went to New York again. I was just then. in New York for for a different for podcast stuff, but I got to do some spots. That's cool. What podcast stuff? Like it was a festival for podcasts? No, just cons- some guy hired me to do some consulting. Oh, cool. So I got I got got lucky. Um, but yeah, I went I went up to San Francisco because I I don't think I'd been there by the, when I was here last, had I? I don't think so. Mm. For July Fourth, maybe not. I went up there for a weekend. I did uh, San Diego for a night. Where did you go up in San Francisco? Um, San Francisco, I did mostly bar shows, but they have this group called Hella Funny up there. Okay. And they do shows every night of the week. It was pretty crazy. I they, did, do them uh, at, they do them at bars? Yeah, they do. It, they did a couple bars. Um, and then I went up to Santa Rosa, which is like an hour north. I know Santa Rosa. I had a film festival up there once. Oh, it's yeah. It's really nice. It's cool. And I got to, it was the second time I ever got to do 20 minutes. Um, and it didn't go great. It went okay. It was just, it was at the end of a long bar show, mm. and everyone told me, like, oh, if you're going to do that show, make sure you go up in the middle, and I was, I was like, I'm going a blast. And yeah. Like, it's going to be rough. Was that one that you were, was that the one you were telling me about a few months ago, that, like, hey, they asked me if I can do this 20 minutes, like, should I do yeah. it? That was so, it? So, yeah, that was the first time someone you asked me. Actually, don't like, put it closer. You're oh, too, don't, you're too loud. Closer. Just leave it right there. Um, someone asked me, and I wasn't sure, because I don't, I don't want to over-promise, um, so yeah, that was one of the ones where I wasn't sure what I should say, but even just uh, a couple nights ago, I did a 20 for like the third or fourth time, and it's getting better each time. So I'm, I'm getting lucky with it. But uh, what did you? Th- what 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 could improve of you doing a longer set? What well, your opinion? Well, like especially when I did it in Santa Rosa, um, I was basically just doing every joke I'd ever written. Mm. Um, did you did you write them in a specific order though? I tried to. Whenever I put too much thought into the uh, the order, into the order, or like what I want to say, I I I am too focused on it, and it tends to not go. It, it doesn't necessarily go bad, but I don't feel loose. Mm. And the last times I did twenty, both times were by accident. Okay, <laughs> like, how was it by accident? Because like they told me that I could go for whatever, mm. and. Um, one time with, was with Rodrigo Torres and so you, you smoke weed, but do you really smoke before you go on stage? Never. Not never. I have it. I, and I, do, I, I try not to, I make, I've done it like once or twice. It, I should not. I've done it and it's gone good and bad for me. Um, but I've kind of come into like sort of the sweet spot mm. is I, if I smoke half a joint before I go on, like an like half an hour to an hour before I go on stage, so I get kind of high, and then I come down a little bit. That's like, like my sweet spot where I don't get nervous about what I'm gonna do, mm-hmm. and I just kind of go on and like let it flow. So I was with Rodrigo in Riverside, and there were like eight people there, but just no one gave me the light, and I was just going. And at a certain point, I was like. Hey, if someone wants to give me the light, and I, I when I got off, I did twenty seven. Okay. And then this past week, I did a few shows in Orange County, and I, on Saturday night they were like, "We'll give you light around ten, but you can do however much you, you want." And I got the light, and I haven't I haven't gone back to check. <laughs> so you got a ten minute light, and you did like twenty. No, I, I they said um, I think they probably gave me the light close to fifteen. Hmm. And I just, when I got off, it said 21. But I, I always start my recording a little bit early just to be safe. <clears throat> but That one in Riverside. Yeah. You uh, you said there's only eight, eight, eight people. Right. You did a little crowd work in that 27 minutes. A little bit. Uh, this past weekend, yeah. the, where I did the 21, I did a lot more. And I'm getting better at it. When there's less people in the crowd, 
I tend to do a little more crowd work. Okay. I don't even know. I'm not even forcing it, but I think it actually is like the right thing to do. When there's less people? When there's less people, why? I do more crowd work. Because it's already intimate, so let's make it intimate. Like, let, let's get to know you. You know mm. what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. if, there, I if, if, I mean, obviously you want to try to be intimate with all crowds to, to connect. You don't, you don't want to connect with them on a certain level, but you can't individually go to 40 people and talk to them. You know what I mean? But when you got eight people, you can a little more address them directly to them. Right, and that's sort of, like, I'm at the point, and I'm getting better at it now. Like, what I used to do before is, like, I would ha- I would give, like, a very short question to the crowd. Mm. Or I'd say, like, oh, you're probably thinking this. Or look at, like, I'd address yeah. them, but I wouldn't really give them a chance to talk back. This time, <laughs> on the we- on the weekend, this weekend, I, I went back and f- it was outside. Have you done McFadden's Public Market in uh, Santa Ana? No. Actually, a good job. I've done it three times now, um, but it's way the fuck up there. Yeah, well, it's like it takes like an hour and forty five on the way down and like forty five on the way back. Um, but I, uh, I've been doing way too many open mics, uh. and especially at the fourth wall. Well, you can't do crowd work. You can't do crowd work there, and then I also, I still obviously I'm only almost two years in. It'll be two years mm-hmm. in, at the end of December. Yeah. Um, so I still need some open mics, but you can't really test stuff out. And then I felt like I wasn't really. I was just kind of going to be with like my friends. Yeah. So like this week, I didn't do one open mic. No, no, no. I didn't do one open mic at the fourth wall. I did two earlier in the week. <laughs> um. But then I went to Orange County three times. I did the Ice House. I did the VFW last night. Mm. So I'm just um, I'm trying to get as many real shows. Even if I, I don't, of course. I, I don't. If I, even if I don't get paid, which normally I don't. I mean, you should always do. I mean, I mean, who gives a fuck if you have to get paid? You're two years in, right? Yeah, you. But you were always talking about, especially recently, taking breaks from open mics, like just not going them because they're too available. I'm currently taking breaks from specific open mics right because they're too convenient and i was going every week and two things were happening well pro- more than two things were happening, but specifically this was happening um i was overstaying my welcome i wasn't getting the special treatment you you walk in and bro we can get you up soon right now i go every week now they're i'm, I'm going on at midnight you know so it's not a rare pop in anymore right second reason is it's around the corner from my house i can always get up so, I'm not really gonna go out and try to find other spots if I if that if if I have that it's too convenient. You gotta force yourself. Yeah, that's the problem with the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. Was five minutes from my house, not even. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, that's an. I mean, you definitely listen. It's fine to do open mics. It's more than fine to do as many free sh- gigs, bar shows, brutal <laughs> shows. I had a bad. I had uh, most of them were good, but I had one really bad. One. A bar. I, yeah. It was kind of like Bars a bar slash restaurant. Rough, dude. It was mostly a restaurant. Like it, it was like one of those like sausage those places. Or even, dude, restaurants are awful too. It was, it, well, it's weird because like like, so I did. Have you done? Uh, it's like Eden's Gate, or it's it's a Mediterranean restaurant. On, the in, gate in, in the in the gate. I have done in Encino. It. I have done it. It's it seems like it's like Vegas inside. It's it's huge. It's huge. Yes, it it feels like a like a Vegas like hotel or something right. inside. Yeah. But I had a great. I had a really fun time in there, and it was because Joey always likes to tease me. Not like he likes to tease me about other stuff, but like he'll tell me about some of his like horror stories. And he told me about a time where he went up, and they made him wait till the end, and he went up after a band. Yeah, that's oh. the worst. <laughs> and and at, at the did gate, you have to go after a band? It was a, a hot girl and a guy, acoustic guitar, and she was singing. But did they open the show? No. It went mid? Middle. middle. Ooh. And then I went after, and I, I was nervous, but I got them. I was happy with it. Like, they they, they, they came right back. But then uh, this past week at the Sausage Bar, it was really weird. Like, the host went up, did his stuff. They weren't really paying attention. And then immediately after the host... Everyone in the bar, and it was full, like, just went back to, like, talking like it was a bar. Mm. But the only weird thing was, is at the end of everyone's set, and then when the host would bring someone else up, 
they'd clap, but then they'd go right back to not paying attention. Yeah. I was just gonna say that's gonna be. <laughs> so what do you weird. mean sausage bar? It, it was called. It's called uh, Worst House. It's like I forget that there's uh, there's one in L.A. I forget. Uh, so what's Bruce the Gooch. no? But, what, but what's the scenario here? Is so this like, like people going there and they, to get some food, and and they're and then they're like, oh shit! I didn't know there was comedy going on in here. There were some people there for the show, but I think the majority of it were people. Yeah, just sure. They're not. Of course, they're, they're not going to pay the sausage. Hold on a second, you guys. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about this for a second. This is when I say bars and restaurants can be brutal, right? This is exactly the reason. This is because they're not there for comedy. Right, but you have to do your set, yeah, <laughs> and go and just and and don't let it affect you. If they don't listen, you don't care. If right. they don't laugh, you don't care. Well, I've had people like I've done Universal Bar and Grill where the oh, oh dude, I had a good set there, dude. I've had decent sets there. Wait, where is yeah. that? Universal where is Bar and Grill, right in Lancashire. It's on Lancashire, and... almost yeah to Universal oh, Studios. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. a tiny little dive. Eric Allegra used to do a Wednesday, and uh, dude, I've. <sighs> But that like place. they're 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 still kind of like either quiet or quiet-ish. This place was like literally it felt like a like a like a Saturday night at a bar mm. where like they were just yelling. Yeah. And I tried to do something. Did Did you ever see um, the young comedian special? Did Joey ever show you that? The Rodney uh, Dangerfield. I don't know. I don't think so. There's something where where um, Dice Andrew Dice Clay came on, and for like the first two minutes didn't say anything, and he had a cigarette. Okay. And he did some like really like animated shit, so I, I went up like fifth or sixth. I was one of the headliners for yeah. the show, uh, and I was the first guy to do fifteen. And after I saw literally everyone, it wasn't even bombing. They weren't doing bad. They just no one was paying attention. Yeah. I went up, and I had this pack of joints, and my in my head I was going to do the same thing Dice did. And just be real slow. Mm. Take a joint out, and ha- maybe they'd pay attention and be like, "Oh shit, is he gonna light up in this restaurant?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like how you thought this all through. I thought about it. That's okay. I like. <laughs> I, I'm not being sarcastic. It didn't I, work. I like that you had the whole train <laughs> why, of thought. Why didn't it work? Because what I do, I did what what uh, Dice did was he actually committed to being quiet. Mm. And I made how it, awkward I, did it feel after a couple seconds, and you bailed? It felt pretty awkward, and I didn't <laughs> bail, but I did bail. I, I made a joke. I was like, uh, you guys have been kind of rough, so I'm just getting ready. Mm. That I'm going to need this joint. And they just immediately were like, yeah. So I was like, okay, that didn't work. And then speaking of stuff not working, <laughs> I uh, was at the Ice House. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm sorry. Before you, you ju- so you're jumping from place to place. I know. Let's, I have, let's I have talk so many, about I have one so many thing. bad stories. Let's talk about one thing okay. at a time. So first of all, the reason it works for Dice. Right. Other than the fact that he's Dice, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and at the time he wasn't Dice today, where he's he was he was Dice like, like a fucking up and coming comic like like the rest of us, right? Right. And the but the reason it works was it wasn't how long his silence was. It's not it's not that his his was longer probably because he's Dice and he can ham it up. What it is that you're doing is that you're getting the room to look at you. Right, that's what I was trying and to do. And I know you understand that, but Kevin, you're you're taking a nap. You fell asleep watching TV. Mm-hmm. Your roommate comes in the living room and goes like, "Oh, he's sleeping. Let me turn the TV off for him." Turns the TV off. What what happens to you? I throw the remote control at his head. No, do be, be serious. Up. That's true. I, that's happened before. I've yelled at no, them but, to but, turn but, the but, but that's not what I'm saying. Is like. If he turns the TV off, he thinks I'm helping him out. He's sleeping. I'm mm-hmm. gonna turn the TV off. But what did he actually do? He woke me up. He fucking woke you yeah. up. Yeah, and I threw him. Off Why did he wake you up? Because there was a change in the room. You right. fell asleep at with this once white noise, and then all of a sudden there was a change in the room. Right. So if every single comic is going up on the microphone and going like trying to do their jokes, and the and the audience isn't listening, they keep talking to each other because they're eating. This is tricks that you learn from doing bars and restaurants. Okay, you go up there and you don't use the microphone. You don't say shit. You go up there right away and just fucking not say anything. You're going to get start talking to them without the microphone. Just go. Oh, that'd be smart. Just take the microphone away and go, and go to, to the audience members one at a time. Like if there's eight of them, you look at the one. Hey, hi. That's what I used to do. I used to go like hi. And I look at you and go, hey, what's up, man? 
individually. If there's a small crowd, individually, I go to each one. Hi, 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 hi. Everyone keeps looking at me like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Right. And then I would just start talking. Either do crowd work or that's really not me. I usually do a joke, like lay a really good joke on them. Once you have everybody looking at you, have you said hi? Hey, hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, what's up? I would give it a couple seconds too. I'd like pause and be like, what's up, man? Just let, 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 let them look at you. And, yeah. and it feels awkward. As soon as you feel awkward, that's good because everybody's looking at you. And then when they're oh, all looking at you, okay, yeah, you f- you you feel awkward, so you bail. Right. Awkward's good. Silence is good. You know how they say, "Get used to the silence." Right. Get used to the silence. Don't let the silence take you down. You go once you got everybody looking at you. Drop a joke on them. You know, and then if you want to go crowd work, a little crowd work, and then you can go right, and then you could do your set as always. Once you have everybody's eyes on you, don't feel bad, dude. I have left so many bar shows feeling like I wanted to fucking quit, dude. <laughs> like just feeling like, and then you start thinking about other comics. This is what gets you mad because because other comics are gonna go, bro, Lee, don't beat yourself up. It's a bar show. It's tough, buddy. Everyone's gonna say that to you, but you're gonna be mad because you're gonna think, well, Joey would have crushed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're gonna go like, you're gonna think of comics, fucking. Uh, you know, Kate Quigley would have got him. Your Dean Del Rey would have smet. Wh- whoever you you like, you know what I mean. Whoever you f- your friends that you know crush. Because right. then you, yeah, it was a bar. But then you start getting mad. They can do it. How come I can't do it? And then you start to go like, f- find ways. I'm gonna f- I'm gonna make them fucking look at me. For like a year, I didn't use the microphone when I was doing those bar oh, yeah, shows. Okay. I I didn't use the microphone. There's there's, there's eight of us. And I was the only comic who didn't use the microphone. Guess what? You turn if you and, and Kevin are having a conversation, eating your fucking sausages. <laughs> not each other's sausages. <laughs> Let's not, maybe you never know. Kevin's a handsome man. So you guys went ah, yeah. there to get some brats, right? And yeah. You're sitting there eating, having a couple beers, talking to each other after a long day of work, and there's a fucking comedy show going on. And then like you, you, you know, you keep tuning in every now and then because some of the comics say something. But then you keep going back to your conversation. But the one comic that goes over there starts. No microphone makes you yell. Mm-hmm. You're gonna start. You're gonna start going like, so you know my I, I uh, you know whatever one of your jokes you start off. So my dad came to visit me and blah 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 blah. You start to say everyone's. It's the TV thing. The no the, the ambiance changed in the room. You're, right, they're gonna okay. turn once you got them all. If you want, grab the microphone and continue. Uh, I'll try that one next time. You know, but that's but that's why diced work. Right. That's why I used to go into open mics and go like, hey, hi, everybody, hi. And then when you go to open mics and you know everybody's name, fucking, I used to go like, Dave, Mike, what up? Oh, dude, James. And everyone would be like, this guy is so stupid. And that's the open mic he's trying to avoid because everybody's <laughs> sick of his shit. <laughs> no, but you know, you just uh, get everybody. If you want to try, try a new joke and you, and you go to open mics and you go, I can't work out new shit there. Everybody knows me and nobody listens at open mics. You gotta get them to look at you. If I know I want a new bit, th- to to try a new bit, I'm gonna make them look at me first, dude. So, what, I mean, you got you guys are talking about how bar shows can be really bad. What is some? What do you guys actually like about doing bar shows, other than having to work on that new type of skill? What, what I what, like about doing a bar show yeah. is that it makes me a stronger comic. Okay, that's it. You're not going to to do a bar show and be. And I I love doing bar shows because I love fucking drunk people and they la- they laugh more. No, it's simply that when you go do the store next or the ice house next, you're gonna crush. Or yeah. the next time you do it, yeah. sorry, the next time you do a bar show, like right now I go do bar shows. You know what I like about bar shows now? Mm. As egotistical as this sounds, I like getting off stage and everyone going like, "Dude, that was fucking amazing." Am I the best fucking comic? No. In that room, yeah. Why? Because I did a lot of fucking bar shows, and I know how to do them. Yeah, like, that's... Because they, for me, they they, they have the... It, like, it, it could go bad, but like I've had I've had bad... I've had ones go bad now, so I know... At least for me, I have some tricks that I know work. So, if I can... If you can get them on a bar show, it feels better. Like, mm-hmm. it feels like I did more yeah. than, like... If I did... Yeah, if you got them, bro... House, like when I yeah when you get them yeah. at a bar show you like it's like when you're I'm playing an old everybody. video game and you learn the fucking Pac-Man pattern so yes. you play. <laughs> exactly dude that's a great analogy you got to learn that Pac-Man pattern as soon as you go like if you watch someone else playing it yeah. right and they're not doing it you're like bro let me show you <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know yeah it's, I know the uh, I know the little tricks now so I I've had some good ones recently cuz I've had I had a couple bad ones in a row uh, mm-hmm. but I I like I mean for me like I like bar shows 
honestly because that's an actual show that I get to do. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, like I did the Ice House this week, and I have a story about that. Um, but the majority of them are bar shows for me. That's great. That's what you should be doing. You should be do, doing. Ref- we're going to do the rehab house again at the in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, didn't I tell you that? No. Yes, I did. September twenty first. I told you. Have you done the rehab shows yet? Yeah, you've done it twice. Times, yeah. uh, it's me, you, and Kate Quigley. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so let me let's stay on bar I shows. Looking, I was looking through my calendar, but two more things I want to say about bar shows before we hear your uh, ice house story. Okay? okay. So another time. Y- other times when you do bar shows, you may not even be doing that well, but you're still going to feel there, feel, leave there feeling great. And other comics and other people in the show are going to be like, dude, you were so good. I remember being like, bro, that room is so tough. How did you crush that? And you know you didn't really crush it. You know that. But compared to like the level, like no one could get them to even look at them. Right. That's what you're basing it on. Yeah. And, and when you – and what I do is like if it's a rough room that like that side's all drinking at the bar and not even listening to me – I don't, I don't need them to listen to me. Right. I need to run my set so that I, I can say it. You're going to get to a level and you're going to be able to do whatever old mic you want and not give a shit. You're going to get to a level when you don't need the audience reaction to tell you how the bit is. You could, you, you, you're you going to get to a level where I just need to say it out loud to gauge myself. Okay. Um, yeah, and when I, when I go do a, a bar show and if that side of the room is not listening and this little pocket's not laughing – I just don't even let it affect me. I just keep doing it. The challenge doesn't become making them laugh. The challenge goes, can I keep my timing the same without the laughs as if laughs were there? That's the new challenge. See, my stuff changes too, too much. I have to get more focused on my writing. But like, I, I don't really have sets. Like, I'll just kind of go and see what I want to do here and there. Well, you know, and just running your... Right. You know, but I had something what you happen, wanted to talk about. Similar to what you were talking about, like, uh-huh. where one side wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And I used it. Like I had, I, I had a guy answer a phone in in San Diego. Yeah. I had a guy answer his phone on this side, but I made this side laugh about it because mm-hmm. I just I was talking. I was like, I'm "Really gonna answer your phone now?" That's gonna happen, dude. Mm-hmm. That's uh, gonna happen too when you're when you that side of the room's not listening to you, but you'll do, one guy's gonna turn around and, and you know sometimes they'll go to the other buddies at the bar, and be like, "Dude, this, this is pretty funny." Dude, Come that just happened on uh, Chappelle's Six and Stones. I was watching that. I haven't I seen haven't, that yet. You haven't seen it's it? Really good. Yeah, it's really good. I, I'm sure it is. I want to check it out. I haven't had a second yet, um, but yeah, dude, it's just, just, just fucking, just go through it. Like I don't like if you expect them to laugh, like you're an idiot. Like you're going to a bar show. You just but you're I'm really going, funny though, huh? I'm really funny though. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. But I, but I just want you to. I just want you to build a, a, a tough skin. Yeah. And I want you to. I want you to get your timing on your bits down so perfect that you know where the laughs should have been. So you, 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 your beats were still on on the joke. And right. the, especially something that you do. You know what you do a lot, and I actually really respect you for is that you don't just like get satisfied with just trying to be funny you give yourself challenges at every show it's like you're trying to trying to do something new you know what i mean trying to have fun trying to experiment and give yourself a new type of challenge it's just like when you play video games a lot you beat the level but now i kind of want to play the level like this way and you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like these type of challenges because you always find new things to do so i just like yeah i know new challenges are great because i've 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 been in this scenario i've i've been in the I don't know, wait, rut, I guess you can call it, mm-hmm. where you went through a long phase of the same shit. Mm-hmm. And then I remember the feeling of when you tried something new and, and then you get that old feeling back of like nerves. I'm like, oh man, I haven't been this nervous in a long time. Why? Oh, because I'm not challenging myself with new things. Right. You know, and then I, I remember that feeling. And so I try to always put myself in that feeling of you not ever being tried too to comfortable. Like, try to like experiment at all, with like new ways of doing stand up. I mean, not like fucking crazy, like lighting your fucking shit on mean? fire in the middle of the stage. I don't know. That's like the thing is when you constantly chat, like when you feel like you, you've plateaued and you want to start challenging yourself, that's usually when people start experimenting yeah. and inventing well, new ways to do shit. I don't want to say, I don't want to say no. Be, I mean, to me, stand up's a man, a mic and a fucking light mm-hmm. and, a, and a brick wall yeah. and, and, and your brain and the perform, performance that you're going to give it. But I don't want to say no because... If I come across one thing one day, I'm going to go like, man, no one else is doing this. Yeah. But on the other hand, I've seen other guys do stuff. And I'm like, bro, just so I can do stand up. Like, put the fucking violin away. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so is the Why is there a tambourine? 
<laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, I'll tell you what, though. It used to really... It, it still somewhat bothers me when comics incorporate a song in their act. Like, they would go like, DJ, hit it. And it yeah. had to be, like, music to their act. Sometimes it bothers me because I go, like, bro, especially bothers me if that's your only good joke. Like, that's your... Everyone's like, do that one, do that one. Okay, bro, I'm going to close on it. Because then... If you if you rely like what happens if you don't have the CD, what happens if the DJ didn't have it? Then you you have no act, right? So I don't like it for that sense. But there's a couple people that did it really well, and and I go that's like a nice performance piece they did. Like a good example, I'm sure there's other good examples, but a good example that I can think of is Kevin James' first stand up special. It's called Sweat the Small Stuff. It's an hour long special and it aired on Comedy Central in the late '90s. I own it. You own it? Yeah. How great is that special? Pretty great. It's fucking great. He hasn't great. watched it yet. It's still in no, the bag with all of his that, other movies. That's, that's, one, that's one of the ones I've watched. I like How that. great is that, right? Pretty great. It, you should watch it, dude. It's it's just it's just a fun. Mm-hmm. But the closer? I don't know if I remember. Okay. So tell me. He's picking. He, he's doing a bit about greeting cards and how people pick up greeting cards. And then he does like an act out. Where, of him in a in a store oh, yeah. picking out greeting cards and he goes through the motions of like how people pick it up and they read it and they, <laughs> and they like laugh or do a little he does like a little space oh, I think I've seen and that. then he puts it back like oh, no that was stupid then he but he doesn't say a word yeah. it's just him with the facial expressions of the act out but the whole time there's music playing as if he's standing in like a, a cvs or mm-hmm. something so things like that i'm like that's kind of cool i like when guys I, I like i've i've done mixing it up before i've done uh on my last cd that i taped which i never i never did anything with but i used to have this bit which was like a long act out of of me you know I, I, it's hard to explain but i just like counting shit on my hands saying like this represents this it was like a whole like monologue really and it, it was great it was like a closer for a while um but anyway i just try to like keep pure stand-up but one more thing about bar shows then we'll move on that i wanted to say is uh my pet peeve about bar shows is when comics go up there and they give the people shit for talking during their set mm-hmm. when you go to a bar show you'll you hear it all the time comics hey can you keep it down we're trying to do a comedy show over here or you're like fucking god i'm trying to do a show you guys talked over my joke you know, you'll, you'll hear them call out the audience and it's like bro you're in a bar what did you think was going to happen right that shit bothers the fuck out of me don't even say it don't even waste time talking about how it's not going good you know yeah. what i mean well that's just for, for like any show not just any a comedy bar, show just to any bar I've, I've been to comedy shows where like the, I, I hate when the comics keep bringing up it like well you guys have got no energy i hate when they say that it's like bro if they got no energy that don't bring it up just <laughs> keep doing jokes and do your time until you get off stage and if they still had no energy then maybe they really didn't have any energy it's like right? that's not gonna help it's like telling an angry that, girl yeah, to calm down but that's not helping if three <laughs> comics I, I had a headline the other day and the two comics before me both told the audience how bad they were and by the time i got on stage i felt so bad for the audience i was just like why are they insulting them when they should have just been giving them their best jokes and by the time both of them did their best jokes they would have gotten the audience woken up a little bit you know, and I hit the stage, and I felt like they had no faith in the show because the comics weren't making them laugh. Just fucking make them laugh. Don't talk about how they're uptight. Sure, they're uptight. They fucking just ran in here, you know, had their fucking hands stamped, had to get their drink order in before the show start, and then all of a sudden you throw some guy. Of course they're not. They're uptight. That's your job, bitch. You're the opener. And a lot of them Loosen them up. Insecure about not being able to make them laugh too. It's just like yeah. how do you de- how do you deal with that feeling if you like you're ready for a show and you get up there and not that you bombed, they just weren't getting the response that you want and you feel like shit afterwards, don't you? Yeah. You feel mm-hmm. like how do how do you deal with that? I go get donuts after. I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just start sweating from everything. I, it's just, how do you, you just, deal with? <laughs> that's how he deals with it. He just sweats. That's, that's oh, it. it's the, there's a different kind of sweat where your back, where like the middle of your back start, or at least for me, hmm. it'll start dripping. Oh, it just trickles down right down. I think the everyone down. deals with it differently. Some people, I think, it. But sometimes depressed. you can get them back. Sometimes, I mean. But he's talking about after the show's over, right? Well, yeah. Well, on your way home, no, yeah. and you're feeling bad after, about yourself. Yeah, I'm talking about afterwards. Oh, when after you're I want to kill myself. Really? Yeah. No, I mean it depends. So, like the sausage place, I didn't feel bad. Literally, there was one comic who got him for like two minutes, but like seven or eight comics didn't get him. I I was disappointed. I didn't have a good set, but like, okay, I had a I had a showcase. I'm, I'm trying to host at the Improv's. And I've been emailing this woman for 
six months. <laughs> I thought I was gonna say the, the two years that I've been doing. <laughs> I know, pretty much, exactly. <laughs> and she, uh, I didn't hear back, and I finally heard back, and she's like, "We're we're having this thing at the Improv Lab, my first time at the Improv Lab. Come on down." Did you do it yet? Yeah. How'd it go? Not good. Um, <laughs> it was. It, it, it was. What the, is the showcase for? It was for the the Improv Bookers. Like they're looking for features, openers, it, MCs. I just said I wanted to host. Okay. I don't know what everyone else was there for. Okay. Um, and I went there. It was early, an early show. There was no one there. And the host, I, I, I don't. Let me ask you this: Have you ever done a show like that where you think that maybe they were testing you? Yeah. Like, okay. Like putting you on a bad show on purpose? Not, not a bad show. The other a com- bad spot. most of the other comics were good. Um. I just meant like the host, like I, the, something that I've learned in my two years is how important the host job is. Yeah, is to really get the energy on the right track. This didn't happen at this show, and then I went up second, and the first guy didn't do well either. How did the MC do? Not great. Okay. Um, she, but she didn't. It wasn't like she even did bad. She just didn't really do jokes. It was weird. Well, how long does she have? Five minutes. Some. When you're emceeing, it's hard to do a lot of jokes in five minutes. You got to do the first half. You got to it's waking them up. It's yeah, it's to do a little crowd work. Yeah, and then but then like even like the sound guy was weird. Like he was playing like I even ended up making a joke. It sounded like he was playing like like the soundtrack to like horror movies. <laughs> so like I was like maybe I was like maybe they're just trying to f- see how you deal under pressure. <laughs> like it was it was really weird. And I also like I I kind of need to have it taught me a lot because i at that when i was doing when i did that thing i had just written a new joke that i really liked and was doing great almost everywhere but it was sort of dirty not crazy dirty but dirty and i didn't read the room correctly and they didn't like it okay it was it wasn't where where did you put it in your set the whole set was pretty dirty. It was like a seven-minute set. <laughs> it was it was too dirty for hosting at the Improv. It was, yeah. it was a bad bad joke choice. But I, 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 whenever I go in with something like oh, I'm gonna do this set, it doesn't really go. Well. So I was just gonna go with what had been working recently. Um, but the reason why I, I, I'm, I'm upset about that set, and this is when I was upset, was two comics after me. Not even the next comic. Two comics after me, this woman was up, and she's like, "Not doing great." And she said, "Oh, did did that guy's dick joke scare you away? Because this is real material that I'm doing." Uh-huh. And that got a laugh, and I was like, "You son of a bitch!" You think I, she was my, talking my about jokes you? are real. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah she, she was, was ripping on you. Yeah, she was ripping on me. Um, so I was I was kind of upset about that, but it was so like when that happens, like I'll get. It's, it's, I don't know if you guys got bullied in school, but like, where you like, you think about what you should have said <laughs> yeah, and afterwards like, in the you, shower. You're like, "Fuck that yeah. bitch!" Like, I, was like, I should have said bro. this. My sisters were brutal. <laughs> oh yeah, and then and then and then like, it's a mixture of like, I should have said this, and then it's also like, you're like mad at yourself. You're like, you stink. So you, I just get down on myself. I, it's not as bad anymore. Like I used to get that way if I didn't do well at an open mic. Mm-hmm. Now it's just sort of like at an important show. Um, I'll get down on myself, but I, I also, I need, I need to get more even keeled. Cause like, if I have a good show, I'll get really happy. I'll be like, let's mm. fuck some bitches. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 this is, fuck it. like that was weird in San Diego. Cause I, it's weird. I've always been very shy and very nervous, especially around girls, but on stage in San Diego, no one was doing well. And I went a blast. And I, I had them. I got them going. And I was talking to these girls up front. And I was like, I made a joke, like, oh, did I make your pussy wet? And she was like, oh, you, like, she, they talked back. But she's like, I'm dripping over here. And, like, we went back and forth a little bit. And on stage, I was like, fuck yeah, I'm big pimping. But then off stage, like, I ran away. Like, I, <laughs> I was way too shy. To, I didn't say one word to them. Um, so it's just, it's, it's weird. Like, I, my, uh. My emotion is completely based on how I do. Well, what's the what? What made the confidence go away afterwards? Because you're not on stage. I don't know. 
it's it, there's something about being on stage, and especially when it's going well, you're like, like I I don't really know what big dick energy is, but like that's what big dick energy is. <laughs> like when I when when you're up there doing well, and you're getting them like really laughing, especially. And I don't I don't want another comic to do poorly, but if other comics had been doing poorly and I can get them, I'm like, well, yeah, it's goddamn it right. It feels great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels great. So it's like, yeah, you're goddamn right. Like, let's call Netflix. Let's call everybody. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so true. But it's like, it, like so the Ice House thing was weird. I did was I went up second to last after a long show, and I was doing I was doing well. And I've been trying to work on my crowd work. And something that Joey taught me is make sure you acknowledge the wait staff. Okay. Because if they like you, then you have a better likelihood of coming back. Mm-hmm. So I, I finished a joke and I did the whole thing, give it up for your wait staff. And it was a very pretty girl. And I said, make sure you guys tip. It looks like she hasn't eaten this month yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to say she was hot. Yeah, I don't, I I don't think that message gets across. It didn't come across at all because the crowd was silent and she didn't say anything. And I got them back. I was like, oh, I guess I'm gonna go back to jokes. And I got, I, I got them back. I didn't bomb the rest of the set, but I felt, I felt terrible. <laughs> like, I yeah, how long to, were like, you doing? Huh? How long were you doing? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. That reminds me of Napoleon Dynamite when he's like, I noticed that you're drinking. One percent. Is that because you think you're fat? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. you could be drinking whole if you Hold wanted on. to. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> yes, sir. Did Joey specifically tell you to make sure that you were saying something about the wait staff? No, no, no. He said when I'm hosting. Okay. But no, he didn't say every set. But it was at the end of the show. I had just finished a joke and I, I she was up front cleaning up. So I, like, I couple things I want to point out. Okay. Joey does that. I see him do it all the time. And he's right. It makes a great point. If the staff likes you, then like you, you'll come back. Because when the booker's not there, which like they're never fucking there, right? they'll call and ask, how do you do? How do, you do? And they'll be like, he was so great. We loved having him here. If you're cool with the staff. That's right. how it goes. Mm-hmm. So Joey's right. Keep this in mind. Joey's doing an hour. If you're featuring, you're doing 25, 30. Okay? Right. When you're doing, if you're if you're emceeing, you're doing a couple minutes, but you're also up and down all night. And you're, when you're the MC, you are in the eyes of the audience. You work for the comedy club, right? We were talking on step on the wire. So your your um your job is to tip and give it up and blah blah blah, right? Right. When you're doing a guest spot at a comedy club, and they give you ten minutes, you fucking rock that ten minutes. There's really no time to be talking about the right. waitresses. I, I don't do it all all the time. Right. I, and I see. I, I that was see just your funny, point. though. <laughs> I definitely see your point. Um, but here's the. But you know the. You know the reason why you do it. Like Joey told you, right? What do you mean? The reason that you do it that that the staff likes you, right? right? Yeah, so yeah. you know the reason. <laughs> but and this is gonna sound like I'm making fun of you, but um, if you're gonna say something, keep it simple. Don't try to be. If you're gonna try to make a joke out of it, don't. It be don't let it be at the staff's expense. Right, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I they definitely hate that it. shit. Yeah, I've known comics that go like, make sure you tip her because she's having my baby. They don't want to hear that shit, bro. Right. There's some waitresses I've seen go woo because they're they're party chicks. And they like it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They, and, and, right. But and they, and that that's that's a good. There's some if a comic fucked up like that, then the waitress should go woo because that's how she gets more tips. And I think I think if I had said something differently, like make sure you tip her. Yeah, she's the hottest girl here. I, uh, see, maybe that yes, might not even go com- well. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna go with a com- compliment about how they look, always like how they look good. But you know, you always hear Joey how he does it. Joey, Joey, Joey goes, Joey goes, make sure you tip. He goes, he goes, you motherfuckers got. What does he say? You got, he you got, got short, long pockets and short arms and short arms and mm-hmm. shit. Like he makes a little joke on the audience expense, making them feel guilty to tip. Right. Mm-hmm. See, and that's that's the issue with having someone like Joey. Is I want to take lessons from him. But I also don't want to steal his jokes. And no, even, yeah. Even if it's a, like, even if it's like that, I would never like the long pockets and short arms thing. I don't think it's something he wrote. But for me to say, I, I don't feel like I could say that. It wasn't written for a joke. The first person that said it was it, it's a a saying. 
Right, but I also feel like it's sort of still stealing from Joey if I say that. Well, I'm not saying say that. Right. But no, no, I agree. I'm saying just say something. I was just something. trying to come up with my own thing. Yeah. And I called Joey after, and I told him. He just started laughing. He's like, yeah, that's what happened. I used to do... Some or sometimes I still do when I'm doing a longer set. When I go, make sure you tip your waist staff. And I'd be like, for every, I used to tell that I'm like, dudes in here on a date, for every inch of your dick, you got to tip, you know what I mean, X amount of dollars. And That's we're funny. like, ladies, so watch him if he's only tipping five. Okay, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and the dudes would be like, oh man, I got to tip lit big so the girl knows what's up, you know. And the waitresses love it because they get big tips. Right. Yeah, you know no. what Jeff Garcia used to do? No. You know Jeff Garcia? I know of him. Yeah. Um, Jeff Garcia used to, you know, he's a big crowd work guy um but he people love his fan base they fucking love him dude so he would go up and do like 45 when he's headlining and on the late shows you can do this not on the early shows then the late shows he would be like i gotta get out of here and the audience would always go like oh because they're having so much fun with him because he's really good at crowd work and uh he would go all right you guys want me to do like another 15 and they go yeah yeah, yeah. they go everybody put he would go like this he go everybody put at least a dollar in the air right now everybody whatever you got five a dollar put in the air right now he goes and Wait staff, come get get that. That's for the wait staff. He goes, I'll do an extra fifteen minutes. And he would go, Why does he why do they, why do I do that? And he goes, Because they have to stay an extra fifteen minutes and work. Their checks are already closed. Why should they have to stay longer and work? Mm-hmm. And he would like the, the wait staff making another two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just, and the, and obviously the staff loves that he does that. Yeah, Bert did the the wait staff raffle. That's right. I heard about that. So tell yeah. Kevin tell Kevin what, what that it? is. Well that one Bert is he he's a, a different level. I haven't mm-hmm. seen I haven't seen him do it, but I've, I've, I've seen heard of videos him of him it, yeah. doing it. Where like everyone, he'll say everyone puts some money in a bucket. They'll set they'll put a bucket around, and he gets like a thousand dollars a show because he has yeah. big fucking sold out rooms. Yeah. This was when he was doing clubs. He I don't think he does it at theaters. And then he would I don't know how he would choose if it was like a name in a bucket or something, but he'd pick out one server to win that. Raffle. Oh, they cool. they leave with like an extra thousand. I imagine the that's server probably awesome. gives a couple hundred to the other guys too. Yeah, you know? I don't know. I w- that's up to them. I, I guess. Fuck but you. Hey. I won. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, dude. Um, and I guess that that's the point. Is like, I have to find what works for me. And yeah. Not everyone's gonna go well. But Some it, hard things about you taking lessons from Joey, right? Like you said. Or the fact that you do the podcast with him and you hear him t- talk about all this stuff all the time, and you're gonna take some of that, you're gonna take like all of that, and you're gonna apply it to certain situations. Right, I'm gonna try to. Yeah. You're gonna try to, but like some of it doesn't apply to you. Right, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you gotta like like this is for me right now, this is for me right now. Like I personally think it's a little too soon to be showcasing for improv. Oh, I, I wasn't. All I want wanted out of that was i wanted to be able to go to you Brea wanted, or yeah something to and host. mc for the weekend or something yeah i didn't i don't want to i know but but yeah it, 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 it to looking MC, back on it it was it to mc early and, and an improv you need to be able to you're really good at stories like i i think that has to do with how long you were into the comedy world before you actually started okay that you have a, you have a really good general idea of of what you should be doing and you're a fan of comedy and you, so i think that when I first heard you the first couple of times when you got serious about it, I was like, wow, Lee's really good. And I'm like, I can't believe he just started. And it was because, a lot of it was because your your thing was stories. Like, you were like, I was like, damn. I, and I couldn't believe that you had the confidence to tell those stories. Oh, wow. Thank and, you. And you would, uh, and you'd, I'm like, wow, look at him. Look at him just fucking t- talking about that dirty story and shit. And, and, and you would take something and somebody would tell you, Lee, you should do that on stage. I, was, I thought to myself, I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's too shy. And then you go on stage and you fucking do it. I think your things is stories. Nothing wrong with that. I love stories. I try to become more and more like a storyteller. I think inevitably every comic eventually will be a storyteller at one point in his life. Right. Um, but even Gaffigan's last special, he was doing stories. The last two specials, he had like two two stories in there. Um, if you're going to MC, you need a lot more practice MCing. You can't do stories. Right. And that's and I think that's sort of what I was you talking about. You gotta be about. high fucking energy when you MC up front. Right. Be able to do crowd work, like you said, without letting them talk back. Crowd work with without questions, so they right. don't. So we don't need. We don't want to back and forth with the audience because the next comment comes out. He wants to do his material. All of a sudden, the crowd broke the fourth wall. You know what I mean? Right. Don't let them talk back. You but you want to do crowd work for a little amount of time. Enough, that that crowd work that eases into your material without them even hearing it. And I think that's what I was saying when I was like, I was, I, I was wondering if they were testing us. Yeah. 
And maybe they were, because they were like, there's going to be some nights at the improv where it's empty and people aren't really into it, and hmm. let's see what you can get. So I'm not, I wasn't there. I can't say for sure yeah, that someone yeah. was fucking with you. But I can tell you right now, the improv ain't going to try to be dead on purpose. Oh, no, 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 not trying to be. And who, and who knows? I don't think the songs was done on purpose. I wasn't there. Right. Oh, and I have no ill will against him. I think you're right that it was it was early, and I'm just... That's sort of the weird thing about stand-up is, like, I, I was just trying to get hosting. I, I don't care, but obviously I'd love to. Yeah. Be but, you guys, improv, but you've got to start like, hosting. Ask someone who has an open mic, can I host it once a week? Right. And then go to somebody, after like a month of that, go to somebody who has a bar show and say, can I host it once a week? And work your way up to comedy club, bef- you know what I mean? Before you go to the chain comedy clubs. Right. Because like I said, you need to st- you, you need to like work on your high energy up front, crowd work, easing into your material of the quick jokes, and having an, and one story to close on that's a good one. Right. To bring up the audience. And I have some quick jokes, but I have to, I have to work on writing some quick jokes that are clean. Because most of my quick jokes are, and I'm not super dirty. I'm not yeah. Zoe level dirty, but <laughs> like they're like they're they're dirty jokes. Yeah. Um. So and sometimes that's not great. Going early, going later, mm. it's fine. But early, like I had well, the not this time, but a couple times ago, I did the ice house, and it just didn't. I didn't bomb, but it didn't do well. Mm. When you go early, yeah, you gotta you gotta match the energy of the guy before you, and usually the MC probably had high energy, right? He had high energy, but he was also a little bit of an old school comic. Mm. And oh, okay. and uh, I went up there a little too dirty. Okay, and so it didn't. It, it, I kind of lost him. Hey, but bro. It just it's weird because I I've, I did the same set, same different different room, but same club. You're in the same boat as me, dude. No one's any better than anybody else. It's all about you're better than me. Nah, dude. We're just trying to find our voice. And then once you found your voice, like if you want to be dirty, be dirty, and then it's about your audience finding you. Right. I Joey's think... like what twenty something years in. Right. Finally, his audience has found him. Right. You come to Joey's show, you know what the fuck you're getting. And that's mm-hmm. why I loved opening for him because I can say whatever the fuck I wanted, and I wasn't right. judged. The audience were down. It's actually probably not good for you in the beginning because I was like, I-, I can say whatever I want. It's Joey's audience, you know. Right. But and, um, and Joey's kind of said that to me because he, I never, I never ask anyone to open for them. Yeah. But he's like, I, I can't take you on the road. It's not going to help you. It really won't. On the road. So I'm like, okay. Certain things that helped me because you just learn a lot from him. Right. And also, um, I got to do longer sets and I, I, and I became a good host and stuff like that. And, and, and But it, we're talking about years. We're not talking about one year. We're talking about years. Right. Um, but yeah, dude, there, it, could, it can hurt you in some ways. It's not doing you any favors, first of all, by giving you easy shows. Like pack sold out improvs he's not doing you a favor by giving you those they're you gotta so do those but you can do it they are fun but you deserve one of those every month right. every a couple months but in the me- meantime you're doing bars you're doing those rough rooms you're doing the rehab house and then when you do go with joey with that hot packed out room you're gonna fucking kill it bro. yeah so that that's the benefit of because you were asking like about bar shows is like you you find out what really works so we yeah. we were talking earlier, August, you know, about like what we're gonna do, like what he was doing today, mm. and he was thinking about going down to the store, and I've gotten lucky, and Joey can call in, like every few months I get to do like the employee section part of yeah. the store, because the paid regulars are allowed to call in a friends and family part right. for one spot a week. Right. So, for instance, Joey once a week can call. and So, 10 o'clock, Joey can go on himself. He's a paid regular. But from 9 to 10, it's the friends and family, and he can call and say, get Lee on that one. Gotcha. Right. And I do it, like, once every few months. There's, and like, some guys, you ever notice, they go up every week, and you start to go, how come he gets up every fucking week? Someone's calling in for him. Right. And I, I, I don't want to wear out my welcome, especially with the door guys. Right. I don't want to be an asshole. I've um, never even asked Joey to call in for me. I, I, me either. You I never I mean? asked. Like, I don't want to. Every once in a while, he either. will. Um. But like that room is sort of similar to a bar show, because you only have three minutes, which is almost nothing, and they've seen a ton of comics, and like I, I've learned, because I do I do have some stories, but like what I've been working on recently is like more quick, yeah, attack, attack, attack stuff, and that's why the, it's only a three minute room, right? And, and it's and, to train and, you to be a fucking beast, and that stuff works there. But then I t- I take that attack, attack, attack stuff, and I take that three minutes. 
and then it goes into like six for like a ten minute spot, then I know that yeah. that five or six of that ten minute spot is gonna be fucking great. In and conclusion, it, here, sorry, I we're leaving already. Yeah, we gotta go. Um, it's already yeah. fucking long ass episode. I don't, get a, I don't get a. a this lap camera's by da- battery's dying. Um, but really quick before dying. we go, huh? He's asked if he could have a lap dance. I said my lap yeah, is dying. Yeah, I was yeah, promised a lap dance. dance. Listen, before we go. Um, yes. What the fuck was I just gonna say? So I'm just gonna recap on one thing here, okay? And then we gotta get the fuck out of here. And this one thing is, is uh, throughout these stories that you and I have been talking about, you went over here, and then you had a great set. You did 27 minutes, and then it didn't go good. And then you know what I mean. And then you went up and won, and everybody did bad except you. You did great in that one. You felt great. Yeah. And then another night, you didn't do so great. The same joke that didn't work. You know what I mean? I know that you already know that it happens a lot. Like right. some nights it works here, some nights it works doesn't. But then how come I went and everyone else was bombing and I didn't? And so what you need to figure out is it all happened for a reason. Right. You just need to figure out what the reasons are. Yeah, that's hard. I'm not there yet. You got to videotape if you can. I, I audio, audio record, record them. them. Go back and listen to them. Because that one that you did where everybody bombed but they liked you, something. You connected better. For, for some reason, they just clicked with you. Right. You did the same set the other night and it didn't go so great. So... Was it that they were a good audience and they were a bad one? Maybe, but they all that audience who was good wasn't good for the other comics on the same exact show. Right. So every single thing was different. So you have to go back and go like, why did it work that one? Why did that one not work? And once you figure it out, you get just, you know put it all together over the years. I'm excited to to get to your level. I'm excited for you to get to my level, buddy. And then when that when that day comes, hopefully. I will be f- way far ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully by then I can host for you at the Im- Irvine Improv. Still at the sausage restaurants. Yeah. All right, Lee, you got any shows coming up? Um. Oh, I do actually. Yeah. I got my first sort of opening weekend. I'm opening for Steve Simone at Reno Tahoe nice. Comedy Club. I think he told me about that. October 10th through the 12th. Reno Tahoe. Hell so yeah. So I don't know... How- I, don't- I haven't gotten a link yet, but I'm sure if you're in the area, you can get your tickets go to awesomesteve.com which is steve simone's website and then right. keep an eye on lee syad's instagram yeah so that that uh that's the big one we know tahoe october 10th through 12th nice bro congrats that's gonna be a lot of fun Thank always you. fun working with steve simone um what do i got um the 14th of this of this month september 14th i'm gonna be in highland park you can go to my website augustinocomedian.com or homeschooledpod.com it's the same shit click on tour and uh, you can find out info on where I'll be in Highland Park. And then uh, I'll be in Bakersfield on September 21st at the Rocket Shop. Oh, and uh, so check that out, you guys. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm at Augustino Zoidon on all social media. Kevin is at The Real Kev Lions. And uh, I want to thank Lisa Sayat for joining us today. We're going to go we'll try to see if we can poke around and get on stage tonight somewhere. Or Let's at least, do it. At least I'm, hang. I'm energized now. And, um... That's it. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. We'll see you guys next time.